Popton to Bolinian Workshop, where work is done just for fun. A series of videos will cover the journey taken to create a whirly gig, showing four figurines working in a shed. Each one is different in design and drive mechanisms. I will not be showing how to use any equipment as there are people who can do that better than me. I hope you enjoy the journey as much as I did. This is the fourth video in the series and deals with the construction of the three drive trains and the wind vane. Three cogs are required which are the key to determining the space between the drive trains. The two large cogs will turn clockwise so the movement will tighten on the thread as it goes around. I use a small roll plug in the hole to provide the grip on the rod. The middle drive train is used to transfer the propeller motion to the two other drive trains. It comprises a straight shaft made of round steel with a propeller mount that connects to the rod. The other two are the camshafts are pretty standard. They transfer the circular motion to a vertical motion that drives the movement of the figurines. Before we bend the pass rods, it is imperative that the sleeves between two cams are in place. You cannot put them in afterwards. Bend the two drive trains to desired design and construct the push rods out of a small gauge wire. They are now ready for the final construction. This is the centre drive shaft. We're just going to make this connection on here. We've got the bits that require. These are just cut out from the size on the plan. The centre hole, which is the thickness of the drive shaft. And you've got two holes out here, which are the size. It's just fit in. Yep. Drive shaft goes in there. There's your space up, and there's your cog. These are the bolts and everything that the propeller will go on. Don't glue it together just yet because we need it later on. From the design, mark and cut out the main vein and mark the locations of the windows, door jams and rafters on the main vein. To get the same placement of the doors on both sides of the vein, I drilled holes through both jams and the vein to hold in place by small skewers. Repeat the process for the windows and rafters. Paint the veins and the attachments. Right. Here we have our <coughs> wood vein. It's been painted the sides and we've left some bare wood so we can glue it. Now you can yeah. it is our Now you can just glue them on if you wanted to, if that was your desire. But I like to get them evenly spaced. So I have these and they've got holes drilled in them. Yeah. And the idea is to put these little dinks between what we do is we will find out where we have to go and by that when I did these 
I marked which one was which and marked it on there. So now I know that that's an X. That's an X. It goes on there. Same with here. That's a, an X and there's an X. So that one goes on there. Similar to these things. Got here, got four. Four goes on there. That's a two. So two goes on there. Uh, yeah, the other one is on the other side. What we do is we chop up some of this uh, skewers uh, that we can use to hold the thing together. So the first thing we do is we do a couple of these so to get them started. Yeah. So we Get our teeth and we push it in. Right, so it's a bit out through the other side. Just a little bit through there, through there. And we'll put that aside to dry. Next. Once the paint is dried, attach the rafter with the pins to the vein by applying glue and inserting the pins into the correct holes. Turn it over and glue the other side of the rafter by gluing it onto the vein using the correct pins. Repeat the process for the door jams and the windows. When the glue is set, sand off the protruding skewers and touch up with the paint. The vein is now ready for the final construction. Next video in the journey is about the shed and the propeller. If you have any comments on how I can improve my presentation, please post them in the comments. Thank you. Have a nice day.